Hello, welcome back everyone. Um, today we're going to be looking at Manchester City and their chances of winning the Champions League this year. So uh, looking a bit at uh, Manchester City's season, uh, it's been uh, I mean, bad for what the supporters were looking for. They did finish second in the Premier League, but had defensive difficulties and, you know, uh, had an up and down season. Since the restart, they've been uh, incredible, to say the least. Kevin De Bruyne's been on a uh, fantastic form, as he has been all season. And you can't really take away uh, maybe a couple dodgy performances here and there, but, you know, nothing major, pretty City-esque, uh, you could say. So, uh, looking at Manchester City going into this Champions League, uh, are they well prepared to go into this competition? Um, I think when you have a manager like like Pep, um, anything anything is possible, and and they're uh, they're really hungry because, like you said, they didn't get that first place that first place in the. Um, in in the Premier League, so so now they're really really looking for that for that Champions League win, um, something that they haven't really they haven't had under Pep, and and their performances were really incredible coming back from the from the the coronavirus stop, um, and and they have incredible players, incredible squad depth. And and their their system an incredible system that that really could could go very far in this competition. Um, yeah, I think I think Man City are a very credible threat. I think if I must say, looking at looking at their performance in the in their domestic leagues and their past performance in the Champions League this year, I think along with Bayern, they're my favorites to win it. Um, I think the squad depth they have really allow them to to focus each game one one time at a time and to adjust their teams in function of their opponents. And I think that's a bonus to have. And Pep, with all the experience he has, I think they're they're really a threat to be to be reckoned with. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, they started. They had a brilliant restart. Uh, physically, none of them seem to be that bad. They've had no major injuries. Uh, you know, Laporte's back and fit, and the rest is good. Aguero, I think, is... Uh, no, Aguero, Aguero's, Aguero's here, fit instead, and ready to play. Maybe it's a shame that Sane's gone now, so they won't be able to uh, use him, but, yeah, I think City are as ready as ever. I mean, if there's a year for them to win it, it'd probably be this year. So, uh, now moving a bit to the squad... Uh, I was wondering, is this maybe the last year for this squad of players to try and win the Champions League? I mean, you look at some of the players in there. You've got David Silva, who's uh, going off at the end of the season. Fernandinho's becoming a bit old now. Uh, Aguero as well. Uh, and it's also been a, it's been a long time that these players have been in this uh, Manchester City court and still haven't gone far in the Champions League. So... Is this the last year that you've got to keep this, these players to try and win? You know, I, I would have agreed with you a couple of weeks ago, but ever since the the controversial, uh, uh, like uh, where they un undid the ban for the for the Champions League, I think that gave the City players hope, and maybe it's going to keep a lot of them who were thinking of leaving. Uh, and similarly, that 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 thought of not playing Champions League for the next two years probably motivated them a lot over the past few months for the Champions League. You know, every player has been thinking of that. They knew they couldn't win uh, Premier League, and but they knew they'd be second. So so they foc they focused on Premier League, but but I think their minds were really on Champions League. And now that the ban is off, um, I don't think their their priorities has changed, and they're still very hungry for that for that um for that Champions League uh, Champions League win. And and I thought last year, even though they they got disqualified a, a little earlier, they they were still really strong. And I mean, if you lose one game, you can't go further. But if they had won that, it w I think it would have been a final uh, Liverpool Man City. Um, but but for the next years, I, I think I think the players are still motivated to to stay. You know, now now that they can still play Champions League. 
Yeah, I, I have to agree with Sasha. I think I think the overturning of the ban is the overturning of the ban is the turning point. Uh, now, it, as he says, it allows players to stay and to try and at least to win it next year, even the year after. Um, I agree that some players are getting old, but then again, Pep has been finding good replacements, uh, such as uh, Rodrigo for Fernandinho. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, yeah he, he's right about saying that, um, that the mine were in Champions League. I think the fact that uh, Liverpool, the current holders, were eliminated this early and that uh, Man City have taken a first league advantage away at Real Madrid mm. really put them in a good position. And I feel as if the players feel like it's uh, this year and never, though. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with you guys, apart from the fact that I think it's been at least five years now that these players, I think of Aguero in particular, who's had countless Champions League, Champions League campaigns. I mean, he seems uh, to stop at the same point where it'll be quarterfinals or once in the semis. And uh, I just feel like if they don't go this year, even if Aguero is an exceptional player, or you still are Man City and you should get maybe those players who haven't proved that they could uh, win the Champions League out of the club, maybe. So I, it may be a bit harsh, but... Mm. Uh, I, I think they should do that, just get the sort of negativity. It's a bit the same thing with PSG when they got Chago Silva out this season, uh, you know, sort of getting the new players in the team to completely change it. Because I think if too many players uh, get into like a negative spiral, uh, you have to change the, the lot. Yeah, uh, I, I think I... Think I, I... I'd agree with you on any other team that that would be in the same situation, but the one glue that's really holding Man City together is Pep Guardiola. Um, he really knows how to transform players and and really use them to their full potential, and and that really motivates players. You know, and, and a lot of players want to come to Man City because of Pep. They wanted to come to Barca because of Pep, to Bayern because of Pep, and even if he loses the older players. Um, I think he'll be able to fill the gaps, uh, keep playing with a system that works very well. He's not in a shortage of money. So the young players who haven't really had their chance, like Aguero, will have will have it. Um, Man City have a history of not respecting the final financial fair play and getting away with it. So you, you'll know they'll get five new big transfers over the summers if they need it. Um, FIFA will, will turn a blind eye and, and they'll have... Um, <laughs> They'll have their their chance again, I believe. Yeah. Well, let's talk about more. Let's talk more about the game now. So they've they won two one away against Real at the Bernabeu. Um, so now, I think the big question about this game is how do City not fuck up once again? Because you've seen it under Pep against Monaco, where they won three uh, five three, managed to lose. Uh, Liverpool, they got dominated. Tottenham. Got a bit unlucky, but still lost. Uh, how do they? Sorry, Arsenal. Yeah, Arsenal as well. <laughs> <laughs> how do they cease to mess up in these vital moments, and how do they stop Real uh, having a sort of normal comeback when you look at City's history? Um, I think. I think City is just all about the attack, all about the possession. And I think for a team like that, not to score, for example, I'm thinking about Arsenal, it's not even the fact that they conceded it. It's just the fact, I think, that they just didn't score. I think it just frustrates the managers, frustrates the team as a whole, the players. And that's what makes them vulnerable to counterattacks and to individual mistakes. When they don't score, they're, they get really impatient and just try going forward, going forward, going forward. And I think that's something that uh, that Real Madrid can really exploit. If the defence and the midfield can hold on, stay organised, they can really push Man City to the extreme, then use that counter-attack, or use that, uh, maybe if the team is unbalanced to one side, use that to their advantage and uh, yeah, and, and get a quick uh, and important away goal and, and maybe even two. 
Yeah, um, uh, I have to agree with Idris, and on on top of that, I, I'd have to add that I, I feel like Real Madrid, since coming back from the break, have been pretty pretty incredible. Um, maybe not in terms of the score lines, but they have been winning most of their games. You know, they did manage to win the league, and they have two players, uh, Ramos and Benzema, who really started to stand out. Um, they're the two, probably maybe the elders of the team, you know, who have been there for a while, who can motivate the others. And I think it's very beneficial when your senior players um, can really, you know, give that example for the younger players to be disciplined, to to give everything, and that that Ramos will be a big threat, big threat for Man City um, uh, because um, but you have to aggressive. But you yeah. have to note that Ramos has a red card. Yeah. Oh, Ramos is red carded. Yeah, yeah. So he's not going to be able to play the second leg. So that really puts the whole oh, second leg yeah. situation in a new perspective. Oh, yeah. Um, de- definitely, definitely. They still have Benzema, though, who I, yeah, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't know that. That is, that is a pretty big, uh, pretty big, uh, pretty big loss for, for Real Madrid. Um, but but Benzema's still there, and, and Benzema's been playing well. You know, uh, Zidane's been 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 really bringing the team back to what it was once was under him. Um, I still would have put Man City favorites, but uh, I think anything can happen. Real Madrid definitely have the the power to to burst through and and go through, go through uh, to the semifinals. Court, court. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm. I'm thinking about what Idris said about the Arsenal City game, where just Arsenal decided sort of to park the bus and go on the counter. And I'm thinking about Real Madrid for this end of the season. Of course, there won't be Ramos, but they've conceded next to no goals uh, since the restart. And I don't think it's criminal to say that Real, even without Ramos, have a better defence than Arsenal. So, um, <laughs> yeah, who knows? But I, I think. Zidane's going to know, of course, uh, what Arsenal's done and how to really annoy City in this way. And I think Real, uh, defensively this year, have been so solid. And I think Zidane's going to try and frustrate Pep like that and just not park the bus, maybe, but, you know, sort of of have that hard defensive line. And I think uh, Pep needs to find a way to sort of change his tactics. I mean... He's played the same way against Monaco, Liverpool, and Tottenham. And I think the two games you can really compare is the Tottenham uh, City and the Monaco City games, where City in both of those games, ties were probably the better team, but refusing to have uh, another mentality other than attack and sort of possession, it's cost them. And I'd be interested to see if, Pep can sort of change that. Uh, I totally agree with you. Uh, what I think Man City's Pep's biggest Achilles heel is is that his system is 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 excellent, but but he doesn't really change it. He might change a couple things, but but it's always the same system. It's always he just swaps out players. At they have different qualities and different uh, negatives, you know, and so so he can swap them out, and it changes the system a little bit. But he is very inflexible, and I, and you were talking about Tottenham, um, Man City, and I think that's interesting because on paper Man City's team was much much better than Tottenham, but what po- Pochettino did and does regularly that that uh that uh he that they that that um Pep doesn't do is that he he really uh like changes to his tactic according to the team he's playing. Um, and that could that it could be costly if Real Madrid really exploits that from from Man City. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Um, yeah. I mean, ever since Pep's left Barcelona, it kind of seems that the system worked perfectly with the sort of Xavi, uh, Xavi and Iniesta midfield, Ooh. but he hasn't found. Of course, he's found quality since, but he hasn't found that sort of perfect balance yet. And, you know, Xavi and Iniesta are generational players, so uh, of course you're not going to find uh, one as easily. But, yeah, it, it's interesting to see if Pep can actually reinvent himself. Because, OK, you've done the Prem, uh, but I think Champions League's really 
top of the top uh, European level. And I think maybe European wise, the games changed too much for this style of play to win again. Because even you look at the past um, Champions League winners, and maybe apart from Barcelona uh, when they had MSN, no one's been quite similar uh, to uh, Pep's Barcelona. So, yeah, that brings us to our predictions. So, for this leg and City. Go ahead, uh, whoever wants to shoot first. Uh, that's a tough one. But... That's difficult. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to have to go with City, honestly. Uh, maybe not the win, but at least a tie. Or, I mean, you have to, you have to think about City have two away goals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two away goals. There's the opponent's star, def- star defender is out. As good as Benzema is, I just don't see him making the difference by himself. And I think uh, a three-one City scoreline. Okay, decent. Um, yeah, I think the two away goals are the most important thing that that you know. It's going to be difficult for Real Madrid to catch up. Um, Man City, if they can stay strong in defense, um, I think I think a two-one scoreline for Man City is what I'd go for right now. But I think this game is much less. I think there's much more potential for uh, for you know um, how do you say uh, like plot twist than than in the the Chelsea Bayern game. Yeah. So, well, I'm putting it out there now. On the 30th of July, 2020, City are going out with Real Madrid having like a 2-0 win or, or 3-1, something like that. Absolutely masterclass it. And City are going to go out again because, I don't know, uh, I have faith in the squad, but I don't have faith in Pep, which, you know, <laughs> I mean, this is a, probably challenge it, but... But that, that's, that's the prediction I'm going to go with, with uh, Real going into the quarterfinals and City ending there. So, yeah, I mean, the rest of the competition, though, for C, if they pass, it's still going to be tough because you've got Juventus, probably, or Lyon in the quarters, and then you've got Bayern in the semis, probably. So, so yeah, um, yeah, I don't see either team winning it, by the way, whether it be Real or City. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay, so that's it for our City preview. It's been a bit longer than usual, but at the same time, City are a very interesting team. So uh, that'll be it from us, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.